The upcoming changes to the equipment system that we covered here on the channel just a couple of days ago have been reconfirmed officially from Lilith. At first, they retracted their in-game mail, and then earlier today, at the time of recording this, probably about 12 hours ago, they sent out the same mail once again with a single change. And that biggest change was that the boots that were used as an example in the link were actually meant to be the Dragon's Breath boots. So I'm gonna take this moment in this video to correct the information from my previous video and just let you know that the stuff that we have here all the stats it was supposed to say archer for everything but all they changed was which boots were being shown here and that doesn't really change anything from the previous video so i'm leaving that video up but what it does tell us is that archer boots get march speed so that's interesting but there was a lot of people in the comment section of my previous video who were voicing their concerns about this new change to the equipment system and a majority of those people were free to play players and low spenders who find it really challenging to get their hands on more blueprints and getting their hands on more materials and especially brand new players who are trying to catch up to the older players in every other way possible well now they have to catch up again with their equipment and so a lot of people were very upset in my comments section on that previous video and if you are watching and you are one of them i highly recommend that you click on the big green button here in the in-game mail and actually give them feedback and tell them how you feel about this change i want to let you know that if you curse in your feedback or if you're rude or obnoxious they're probably just going to throw your feedback in the garbage so please if you do give them feedback which i hope that you do please make it constructive the developers are literally asking for it they want to hear your feedback so please don't put your feedback in the comment section below as much as I would love you to comment put maybe a smiley face down there or something send your paragraphs of feedback to the actual people who make decisions in the game I got 300 gems for doing my feedback and it does say that they wrapped up the survey so I don't know if they're still accepting feedback here but if you needed another incentive to do it I mean free gems is free gems so please tell them how you feel but as I was reading through everybody's comments on my previous video and everybody was kind of taking the black pill everybody was kind of you know saying like hey this is pretty much it for free to play players and look I've been playing the game for five years and every time there's a new update people say free to play is dead and yet somehow free to play not really dead yet I bet probably 80 or 90 percent or more of the game is 100 percent free to play and the game is still alive now that's not to say that concerns over this system are are invalid and in fact I think the concerns over the changes to the iconic system are extremely valid and so as I was reading through those comments I thought okay well this isn't in the game yet so how can we know how big of an impact this is going to have on the game when it does actually drop right and that led me to think well we actually have a couple of tools at our disposal where we can sort of test this new system without it being in the game and one of the most important tools to do that is Mark's woman I know isn't that interesting well here's the thing about Mark's moment okay her active skill is a vanilla small damage factor the rest of her skills do nothing special it's just a small amount of stats and the second one doesn't do anything in PvP and what that means is if you don't put any talents on Mark's woman and you have her fight another Mark's woman with the same exact stats meaning the same equipment or no equipment at all the same buffs the same tech the same civilization and everything well if there's no randomness involved then that means both of these armies are going deal the same damage to one another every single turn and they will die on the same turn and in fact that is exactly what happens with Mark's woman and this is something that a lot of players have used to test things in rise of kingdoms in the past especially with gaming and also the gentleman over at the rock battle simulator so then I thought okay well how can we use the rock battle simulator with Mark's woman to test out the impact that this new equipment system change is going to have on rise of kingdoms and as it turns out we actually can kind of get a somewhat rough estimate as to how big of a difference this is going to make now just to prove my point here if i start this automation you're going to see the white numbers on both sides are identical every single turn the units remaining are identical every single turn and that's because they have the same stats across the board the same everything and because again there's never any randomness on any given turn because as you can see in the bottom corner and also behind my head here there is no talents okay so with zero randomness at all anywhere in the system this will never not be the case okay so if we take that and the fact that we're in the simulator we're in a perfectly sealed environment where we can control every single number well I took a look at the information that they provided us here with the dragon's breath bow and I thought okay well 
can we add a base stats in the simulator yes we can can we ignore the enemy's defense well sort of and the way that I accomplished that in this testing is by just lowering the defense that you get from your Alliance Tech holy sites and buildings so instead of it being 93 which is your default lowest I lowered it to 91 under the assumption that we would be ignoring two percent of the enemy troops defense or three percent in the event that we're testing with a special talent now just to be clear I don't know if that's exactly how the game's formula is going to calculate this but obviously the purpose of this video is just to get sort of a rough estimate as to how these things may actually play out when they're in rise of kingdoms and I'm not going to say in this video that this is the end all be all testing of course that is not the case we'll have to see what the actual impact is of these changes when it actually comes into the game but just to pique my curiosity I moved forward and I said okay well can we change the capacity on one side we can can we add bonus damage on the map yes we we can we can control that can we add a 10 percent chance for a five percent damage boost not really but if we just assume that this is about two percent all damage at all times right because again this is a little bit of randomness and there's no way to actually put this into the system but let's just say that it's about two percent all damage flat I know not perfect but we can sort of estimate by tweaking the numbers in the simulator what a iconic tier five dragon's breath bow would look like from a stat table perspective so i decided to run a couple of different tests comparing varying different weapons in the weapon slot well first of all um what did i set as the default here okay well what we know for sure is that with all purple gear on both sides and no talents then the outcome of the battle is going to be that they both die on the same turn so we know that's the case um the other things that i controlled for was first I use the Rome civilization because that has no special unit for archers and it has no effect on archers whatsoever just so that way we can just remove special units in general I made sure that both sides had a 10 percent health rune I made sure that both sides had a five percent skill damage skin I made sure both sides had a 10 percent defense token with 40 percent all damage because that's what you're going to have when you're just in kbk and I kept the troop capacity at 200,000 for both sides with a flat VIP level of one to 10, just because I don't want to add all the other bonus stuff from all the other VIP levels. We're going to actually talk about that in just a minute. So don't worry about that. But from this perfectly sealed system, all that I did was change the weapon on one side. And what I wanted to do first was see what it was like in a vacuum with the current talent system with iconic okay so what we see here the results that we're looking at is we've changed the talented golden age purple sword to a talented dragon's breath bow with an iconic crystal because that's something that you can do right now in the game without any of the changes right that's exactly what you can do everything else was remained identical and the reason that i did this was to see okay well what is theoretically the the benefit that a whale has over a free to a hypothetical free to play player by just changing their weapon to the whale weapon right the best in slot well well not maybe not best in slot that's not the kvk weapon but you get the drill okay and you can see here that there was about 5,000 less severely wounded units by replacing that weapon with about 27,000 units remaining and this was actually a really big number because remember the the only thing we change is the weapon and without changing the weapon both of these would theoretically die on the same turn with zero zero remaining so the fact that we have 27,000 remaining that's that's a shockingly high number and you also see 21.2 percent more severely wounded units on the free to play side okay and this again really shockingly high numbers here for just changing one weapon right but you have to remember how the severely wounded units work in this game like how they're calculated it's kind of exponential as the difference in troops becomes greater and greater right every turn this side was dealing more normal attack damage because it had more defense right so it was taking technically it was taking less damage from this side or whatever but the point is that kind of snowballs over time and that's how you get this pretty big difference in units remaining with again 21 percent more sev wounds over here which is actually kind of crazy but this is the result that you can get right now in the game without any of the new iconic tiers that they have proposed so far the next thing that i tested was just cranking up the whale's weapon to iconic level five okay so what that means is and you can see it right on the screen here the free to play side has three percent less defense and that is to emulate the fact that we are ignoring three percent of their defense 
again not sure if that's actually how it works you can also see in the top left that the troop capacity was increased by 1050 because that is one of the tier benefits that you get and you can't see it in this screenshot but the 40 percent all damage which both sides got for being in kvk was changed to 45 percent and that is again on tier four iconic you get three percent on the map and on tier five iconic there's the 10 percent chance of five percent all damage I call that 2% across the board. I know that technically makes it worse than tier four, but I don't really know how else to do it. And this was the result. Okay. Uh, you could see the numbers here. It was significantly better for the well, obviously, right? Um, we went from 27,000 units remaining to 43,000 units remaining, and we have the sev wounds. The difference here is much larger. So it's actually a 31.7% difference in sev wounds 31 percent just by swapping out that purple talented weapon with a iconic five legendary weapon okay that's a really big difference in this vacuum but this is also kind of the worst case scenario this is assuming that the free-to-play player will never move on from a purple weapon which i think is unlikely right like eventually free to play players will eventually craft a legendary right like of course of course they will eventually and I'm going to assume that a free to play player can get their hands on at least one iconic crystal to put into that weapon okay so what you're looking at here is the same weapon on the left side on the well side okay this is the iconic level five dragon's breath bow you can confirm that again by seeing the ignoring of the defense over here and also the increased troop capacity over here again the all damage has been changed but you can't see it from the screenshot but on the free to play side what I've done here is I've given them a dragon's breath bow I have not given them a special talent on it because most of the time you will not have one but I did give them three bonus base attack stats for the single iconic crystal that they could put in there and this is the result you'll see that the units remaining went from 43,000 down to 36,000 okay so that's about a good 7,000 less units on the on the whale side okay and you'll see that the difference went from a 31.7 percent difference in sev wounds uh to a 27.3 percent difference in sev wounds so still a pretty big difference here for the from the whale's perspective right and i also want to point out that the gap between these two is bigger than it was for the way that it currently works in the game right now remember this was the first test that i showed you okay this is the current iconic talented dragon's breath bow versus the current purple talented weapon and this was the difference okay 27,000 remaining so under this hypothetical new system even if the free-to-play player upgrades to an iconic dragon's breath bow it doesn't it the, the gap between the whale's best weapon is still bigger than it is in the game right now okay so from that point i thought okay well let's say that the free-to-play player can get their hands on the next iconic level so right now we're looking at basically the free-to-play player has iconic level one okay but let's assume that free-to-play players like you know after the system comes out eventually you will get your hands on another blueprint and eventually you will get your hands on enough materials uh to you know go up to uh, tier two of iconic right and again at the time of me recording this we actually don't know what the upgrade cost is going to be it could be extreme expensive it could be extremely cheap it could start off really cheap and then exponentially get insane as you get closer to iconic five right we have no idea what the case is but i've gone ahead and assumed that you know if free-to-play players continue to play and they continue to get their blueprints they will eventually get iconic two i think that's reasonable right to get the first next level of iconic i think that's fine and this is the result okay again on the left side is the whale player with the iconic five stats that we've been using this entire video and and on the right is the free to play player let's say six to 12 months from now who gets the iconic level two on their dragon's breath bow and here you could see that the well still has 34,000 units remaining and the difference in the sev wounds on this test was 25.6 percent that's the difference in the sev wounds here so if we compare that to what's in the game right now right that was my first test what's in the game right now the whale had 27,000 units remaining and the difference in the sev wounds was 21.2 percent so even if moving forward free-to-play players can get to iconic level two there's still a bigger gap between the free-to-play player and the whale then 
than there exists right now in the game so basically what this sort of and again this is all rough estimates rough numbers it's a rough draft this is a lot of assumption built in here okay but what we can sort of you know what we can sort of conclude here is that the gap between free-to-play players and wells using this criteria will be bigger moving forward even being a little bit generous to free to play players than it is in the game right now and that is a little bit concerning I, I would I would say that's a little bit concerning that's just my opinion okay but the scariest part about this is we've only been testing the weapon there's seven other equipment slots that can go up to iconic tier five so eventually and and again I, I don't want to like cause panic here right because it could be the case that it is extremely expensive even for wells to get iconic tier five right like that's probably going to take uh well over a year i would if i'm going to guess right i would be willing to bet that it would take over a year even for mega wells to get all their gear to iconic five that's what i'm going to assume i'm going to assume it's going to take a long time to get there okay and i hope that it does you know let's extrapolate the data that we find in this video if we extrapolate that out not just from the weapons difference but across all eight pieces that's a pretty big gap right it's it's it, it looks like it could technically be a pretty big gap between free to play players and the whales and a couple of other things to remember is that in this video and, and you'll see at the top here I didn't take VIP into account right so like the guy on the left is gonna probably have a 230,000 base you know troop capacity and that's gonna go even higher with all the different iconic buffs he's also probably gonna have better armaments right because whales typically do and this test assumes that they had the same crystal tech but we know that the, the the whale player is probably gonna have more crystal tech as well so the the difference the gap here uh is, is gonna be is gonna, gonna be quite large when you add up all that uh together now again i want to make it very clear that this is just an estimate this is kind of just a rough draft but if you know if this is even um half true right uh, i still think we're gonna see like a 10 percent bump in sev wound difference between free to play players and whales and that's not even taking into account all the other stuff that the whale advantage already has so i think based on what i see now from a rough draft data perspective i think that the criticisms of the system you know he here's the thing right i actually i like a system where the outcome is predictable i like a system where you can make incremental upgrades to your existing gear rather than getting all new equipment right um so from that perspective i actually like the design of the system which is probably not a popular opinion i know but like having incremental progress on my gear i think that's good right i think the the part that i that the criticism is warranted is that um the gap will widen between free-to-play players and and spenders with this new system because it's so hard for free-to-play players to get their hands on blueprints and to get their hands on materials and so if the developers are going to go ahead with implementing the system which i suspect that they will i think that they also need to implement uh new ways for free to play players and low spenders to get their hands on blueprints and to get their hands on materials so that way they don't get completely left behind and left in the dust they you know there needs to be a way for players to sort of grind for some of these things and get them for free right um you know obviously if you're a paying player then you're, you're going to get this stuff a lot faster because you can buy bundles of materials and stuff like that but there still needs to be you know some tweak to the current system so that way free-to-play players have at least a chance uh to, to compete in this new system right because again i think the system itself is actually decently implemented it's just that the disparity from the players is, is going to be um pro people are not really going to like this moving forward that's my that's what i suspect will happen okay so one of the things uh, there's a couple of solutions that i thought of um the first thing that they could do uh, and this is probably like the lowest hanging fruit is i think it might be time for them to upgrade the uh, equipment chest rewards okay the probability here is uh, not great right and a lot of the blueprints in this chest aren't even the best in slot anyway but i think that it, it's probably time to you know reduce some of the stuff here that players don't really need like reduce the normal blueprints reduce the resource items you know these these things we don't really need too much and bump up the legendary blueprint probability i think that would be really really good we know that lilith has changed the golden chest rewards uh, the drop table in the past right to give you more legendary commanders and i think that this would be a good time you know this the equipment chest has been in the game for a long time i think it's a good time to give us more legendary blueprints and more legendary materials here okay because this just gives you this just says equipment materials 
40.5%, but we all know that the drop rate of legendary materials here is extremely low. I get it like maybe like four times a year, right? Like it's extremely low and even purples are really, really rare from this chest. So I would love to see those bumped up, especially for free to play players. And then also give us more ways to get these keys, right? Like give us more crystal keys to open this chest more often. I think that would be a good, like for a starting point, right? Like that's the starting point to, to kind of balancing out this system to making free to play players a little bit happier. Okay. Another solution could be that you could add a similar incremental upgrade system to epic level equipment. Okay. Now, of course that would put the blue shield left in the dust. All right. But I don't think that's really a bad thing. Like if, if there was an incremental upgrade system like this new iconic system, but for epic gear, well, then you actually have a reason to go for the soccer for boogie because you can upgrade it. Right. And, and that would be great. But the other thing, you know, obviously uh, that would be, that would kind of defeat the purpose of doing this whole thing. So maybe they could cap it at like three upgrade tiers or four upgrade tiers, right? Like if we know already, if we know that the legendary, the legendary equipment is going to have five iconic tiers, right? We already know that they've confirmed that maybe for the epics, you can have three iconic tiers or whatever they want to actually call it. Right. And that way free to play players can still work on their gear and they can still progress on their gear. And, and it's a little bit easier to get the, the fragments that you, that you need for the purple pieces. And then the benefit too, is that the purple pieces you can dismantle them for full value, which is not something you could do for the legendary stuff. And so I think that would be a nice gap filler between free to play players and, and Wells where they can still make progress. And then eventually they can dismantle that purple piece for a massive amount or a hundred percent of their materials back, but you would have to give them back all the materials that they used for crafting and then all the materials that they used for upgrading it to the sec, uh, you know, second and third tier. I think that would also be a nice way again, to bridge, bridge the gap, make this not hurt free to play players so much. Uh, and, and also I don't think it's that unreasonable, right? Because here's the thing, like we already have prime legendaries, right? So think about it like this. We have Epic commanders and when they go legendary, they go prime, but how does Lilith boost the power of already existing legendaries? Well, they have a museum system, right? So there's kind of two systems for commanders. The, the way that they've increased the power of epics is by making them prime. And the way that they've increased the power of legendaries is by giving you a museum relic, right? And so the way that I kind of see this is that they are this new iconic system is kind of like the, it's kind of like a prime treatment for your equipment, right? It's getting just, it's the, it's legendary and it's getting even more powerful. But what if we had like a museum relic system? but for your purple weapons, right? I think it could be something like that, or it doesn't even have to be that complicated. You could just implement iconics for purples and cap it at tier three. And then boom, you now have a smaller incremental upgrade system for the epics. Yes. It'll be better to have legendaries. Yes. There will still be a gap between pay to win and, and free to play. There always has been, there always will be, but at least it would give free to play players something to work towards a way to get stronger and a way to not feel like they're getting just absolutely destroyed. Because as we've seen, you know, um, th when they first introduced the, the the equipment system it was just legendary with talent or epic with talent or legendary without talent and then all the other stuff right but now there's the iconic system and then now there's five levels of the iconic system so the legendary weapons keep getting stronger and stronger and stronger and the purple weapons aren't getting stronger at all there's the best you can do is still get a talent right and so i think personally they should add uh, you know an upgrade system for the purples that's what that's what i think right because as we saw in this video the gap between free to play players and the paying players will go up theoretically with this new system now the other thing that i wanted to test here uh, was what happens if you do the same test but with real commanders right uh, and so what i did here was i changed the civilization to ottoman because i think that that's a little bit more reasonable i think that's what most people are going to use and i ran the same thing as you can see here 45 percent all damage versus 40 right this is basically on the left what you see as a tier 5 iconic dragon's breath bow and on the right is everything else is the same except swapping that weapon out for the golden age and i ran this test five times and you'll see here that obviously the 
player on the left is always going to win right now the downside of this test you know markswoman is in a vacuum there's no randomness at all uh with this test with real commanders there is randomness right because there's randomness built into Boudicca's healing and you know her bonus damage for one turn and all that stuff so there, there is you know some randomness in the system but you know you can see here that the left side wins with 18k remaining there's about 3k difference in seven wounds so nothing crazy there um moving on to the second test we see 20 about 22k seven wounds to 27k so about 5,000 difference here in the seven wounds, but 30,000 remaining on the left side, right? On the third test, we see 22,000 versus 27,000. So again, about 5,000 difference in the seven wounds with about 30,000 remaining. For the fourth test, we'll see basically the same thing, 22 to 27 with 30,000 remaining. And for the fourth one, we are sorry, for the final one, we see 20,500 to 27,200 with 41,000 remaining. So um, I don't know what happened on that last one. This one got obviously was a little bit of an outlier. The first one was a little bit of an outlier, but you know, if you do the math and you average all this out, you know, there's about 5k difference in seven wounds and about 30,000 remaining on the player who has the tier five dragon breath bow. And again, you could take that result and extrapolate it across not just one piece of equipment, but across eight pieces of equipment with better VIP, with better armaments, with better crystal tech. And you end up in a scenario where even though both players have, you know, they've basically started at the same point with everything else, with the same commanders and the same talent builds and all that stuff, the player on the left be with this new system, um, has a much bigger bigger advantage over the other player so I just wanted to make this video to let you guys know that I hear you I I saw all of the you know the kind of uh, feedback comments on my previous video um I do share some of your concerns again I do think that this system I think the way the system is built fundamentally is fine I think incremental upgrades to legendary equipment is fine I think that's better than the talent system to be honest with you the talent is a random thing you get a random amount when you refine I hate that okay so this new iconic system I think is fine but I I think that free-to-play players are gonna are gonna feel pretty bad about it unless there's something else that's done for the free-to-play players to either help them catch up to help them get their own iconic levels faster or and and or add a smaller iconic upgrade system to the purple gear so that way the purple gear gets stronger as well right uh because i think one of the things that a lot of free-to-play players find frustrating is that the equipment system was kind of like the one place in the game where you could get a purple piece and use it for gears and feel good about it and not feel like you had to well out for it right and, and i think that's a lot of players got used to that being the case like heart of the saints a great example you could use this forever and feel really good about it right like i think i still use it on my nevsky and my huo right like it's yeah, I, I do. It's 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 a perfectly fine piece. Uh, it's actually the last piece that I'm going to replace here, right? So I think a lot of people are just frustrated that um, this the the equipment system used to feel safe as an investment, and now that the whole system is changing, it feels bad for free to play players. And I think that hopefully the devs will hear that feedback. Which again, the best way to give them feedback is by actually using the in-game mail. That is like the number one way to do it click this button give them your feedback okay again put a smiley face in the comment section below if you if you want to comment on the video or I mean of course you could share your feedback with me as well and let me know what you think about the testing that I did in this video uh one last time just to be clear this was a rough draft testing with a simulation so it's not the end all be all but I think it does kind of shine a light on the fact that this will certainly increase the gap between free to play and paying players by a little bit and you know i think that uh for free to play players they sh they they're gonna want something in return to make it feel a little bit better so let me know in the comment section below what you think but please give the devs feedback and while you're down there drop a thumbs up on the video it really helps out the channel a ton it helps get this video out into the youtube algorithm so other rise of kingdoms players might see it and this video took a while to like plan out and do all the data and all that stuff so i really do appreciate the the thumbs up and while you're down there consider subscribing to the channel and clicking the bell to be notified the next time i upload a rise of kingdoms video with that being said guys thank you so much for watching this has been omniarch i will talk to you guys again soon peace